Do you like comics that are funny, like the comic strips that you yeah. have? Yeah. Do you like... Do you like women rolling around on a roller skating rink being tough? Yeah! yeah. Do, you, do you like roller derby? Yeah! yeah. Woo. Have you seen the movie Whip It? The Great Richmond's Convention Center and see Roller Derby? Yeah! Well, this weekend, you're in luck because that is happening. So, if I were you, I'd go. But do you like comics? Vidal Sassoon and Vanilla Pudding. <laughs> and, 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 you 
know, it's really gross. Like, when everything's said and done, like, it, all right, it's pretty much what you would picture a Quentin Tarantino wet dream looking like. Aww. It's, I've seen cleaner shows at a Guar concert. <laughs> like, it's, it's when, like, when it's all done, she looks like some albino toxic Avenger. <laughs> Aww. Aww. She got paid way more for doing that than I am doing this, fucker. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> so I'm a fun guy, all right? I like, to, I like to play games, board games, and not just for the cheer entertainment, but, you know, for what you can learn from board games. Uh, like, a case in point, Shoots and Ladders taught me that pictures of injured children are always funny. <laughs> Twister taught me never to get in between gravity and a fat kid. <laughs> Uh, don't wait, Daddy taught me that it's customary in some houses not to beat the shit out of your child when you wake them up in the middle of the night. Uh, Mousetrap taught me that uh, sometimes it's cheaper to hire an exterminator versus throwing a bowling ball in the bathroom and seeing what the fuck happens. Uh, Clue taught me just how easy it would be to murder a member of my family and get away with it. Uh, Scrabble taught me that I spell like a retard. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Operation taught me I can make a quick buck on the amateur surgeon circuit. And uh, guess who taught me how to pick my rapist out of a lineup? <laughs> other than board games, <laughs> uh, I like to you know I like to play other fun games. You know, like me and my roommate, we play fun games like uh, like Would you rather toss over salad or throw Dr. Phil a handski? <laughs> or which GI Joe would you go gay for? By the way, mine's Destro, just to see if his knob is all shiny, too. <laughs> Nobody watched G.I. Joe's. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> but as of late, what's gotten us recently is, uh, is which breakfast cereal mascot is most likely to be a pedophile. Now, uh, now, I know there's tons of ways to go about this. First thing off the top of your head, uh, Necker Chief Boy Scout pedophile Tony the Tiger. Wrong. Fred from Scooby-Doo had a neckerchief, and he wasn't a pedophile, he was just a dick. Uh, let's see, um, Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch seems like so dirty and seamy, but it's really more innocent. Like, I really think instead of like luring the children into a ship, he's regaling them with tales about like the great breakfast wars, and about how there used to be two Rice Krispies, or four Rice Krispies elves instead of three. God damn it, Christopher P. Elf was a good man. Uh, well, Count Chocula, yeah. Yeah. he's not a pedophile, he's black, he's into fat chicks. <laughs> um, let's see, I, you know, it, you know, it, always, it always boils down to, uh, to the Lucky Charms Leprechaun, because he's always like luring kids in the fucking woods with promises of magic treats, and then they finally chase him down and tickle him on the ground, and they... They wrestle him and he sprays magic milk all over him. I don't know. He's a 600 bitch. That's what gets him off. <laughs> Is it weird for anybody else when you walk into a house for the first time and see Chris Hansen pop out and you expect a three way? <laughs> we all know Jesus can walk on water, but can he hold it in his hands? Oh, I joined the Autobahn Society and bought driving gloves for nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for laughing at that. I appreciate that. It's like a pity laugh. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Uh, where am I? I think I'm going to start a Bad Fish cover band, but uh, I'm having trouble with the name. I'm thinking of uh, Grow Up Brad Nowell's Dead. <laughs> A buddy of mine just recently had a baby, and he's been bombarding me on Facebook with all sorts of ridiculous pictures, like, oh, oh, look what he's doing now, and this shit and that. So I finally got fed up with it, and the last picture that he sent me, I, uh, I, tagged, I commented him back, like, yeah, I hit that. And now not only do I not have to see the kid, but I have to stay at least 500 feet away at any given time. <laughs> and I get to introduce myself to the neighbors. <laughs> Awesome. One lap from a Megan Slaw joke? Awesome. Uh, Alright. Uh, I'm beginning to feel like my life is like a TV sitcom. 
Just because, uh, you know, I grew up with a conservative Hispanic dad and like a crazy white mom, so I feel like my life is a little bit like I Love Lucy. But then, like, I moved from the city to the country, literally to a subdivision called Green Acres. And now every time I, like, like, I feel like it's like the Flintstones because every time I smoke pot, I feel like my appliances are talking shit behind my back. I'll leave you guys with this one. <laughs> and it's a, it's a fun game that I've made up, and, like, I hope you guys can play along. Uh, and it's, the game's called Convince Your Best Friends That Their Favorite Songs Are About Butt Sex. <laughs> And I, I went ahead and started a list for you guys. Uh, Feels Like the First Time by Foreigner. Uh, Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Um, let's see. Uh, Twice as Hard by The Black Crows. Heard So Good by John Mellencamp. Yeah. Yeah. Turn Your Love Around by George Benson. Oh. <laughs> Alright, thanks Tony. Thank you guys. <laughs> Again for Jason Velez. I like the club. But the girl he is with, the two he's with, she's like one of the hottest girls here. I just don't want to say that. And then I want to bring up the next comedian. <laughs> who, if you're all fans of the band where Jarvis Cock Cock Cocker then you <laughs> Seriously, put your hands together for Mr. Jesse Jarvis. For it? That's a good sound. Cafe Jam, how are you? Yeah! Oh, I'm sad and I have to pee. <laughs> yeah. I, my, my, my car has died today, like it's done driving for years. I'm really sad because it was really attached to it. It's just like turning it off for the last time, like, I just felt like I was pulling like the plug on one of my relatives or something. <laughs> it's just really sad. But uh, man, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk into this microphone now about jokes. Yeah. But I, I um, I really, I, I hate chatting online, on Facebook and stuff, because I'll be chatting about my wild and crazy weekend, and then uh, I send all the chat information to the wrong window. It ends up being one of my relatives. So now my nine-year-old cousin knows that me and my friends like to get drunk on the weekends. Make chalk outlines of her dicks, make it look like a crime scene. But then, but she's a sweet, innocent little girl. She has no idea why anyone would do that ever. And then I just gotta explain to her, well, sweetheart, that's just something adults do when they get together. They don't have any self respect. <laughs> you don't understand when you're old enough. <laughs> yeah, alright, whatever. Uh, I, uh, did anybody ever go to a high school or anything where people played Magic the Gathering or Dungeons and Dragons or anything? Anybody? Yeah, they, 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 they speak in this weird language like I don't understand. Like, I kind of wish I did, but I just don't get it. Because I'm not saying it's a nerd language, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing you could use in real life ever, you know? Like, I saw you at that party, so I'm talking to that chick, how'd it go? Well, with my level seven agility, I just let my trisector goblin potion do the talking. It was my relic emperor sword. How could she say no? Well, dude, if you take her out, uh, make sure she uses her anti-gromian elixir, so that way you don't catch the rasps. I'm just saying, I'll take her up your body like Lucas Willis after an elf storm. You just gotta be careful. I try to chime in, like, yeah, dude, the STDs are for real, man. You gotta be careful. And they're like, dude, what are you talking about? I hope you, uh, I don't know where this is going. I got, I, like, I thought I wrote something that's just, like, it just wasn't good. I don't know if I can say it. Say it! 
Da, da. <laughs> da. But um, I feel motorcyclists get a bad rep, you know, like the crotch rockets and Harleys because of the noise and stuff. But uh, you know who's much worse? People who ride Vespas. You know, there's, there's, do you ride a Vespa? Oh, do you know I know someone who rides Vespa. Okay, well, level with me here, and we'll see if you agree. It's just, it, they got that hipster pretentiousness to them, you know what I mean? And I, I realized this, I was on my porch the other day, and there's this guy with no legs, he's a Vietnam vet, perfectly nice guy. He's in, he's, he's in this motorized wheelchair, and this jackass in a bright orange Vespa pulls up next to him. And he's like, it matching bright orange helmet, too. He's like, hey, hey guy, hey, what a race? Yeah, didn't think so, and just speeds off to like, Wherever hipsters go to after they just committed a sick burn on a war hero. <laughs> and I, I just, I just assume that I just assume they're all vegan. Just that attitude they have. I just assume they're all vegan. Which vegan, if you look it up, uh, in Latin it actually translates to "I'm a much better person than you are." Oh, yeah. Does. I think I knew that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they go they go through the alleys and dumpster dive and stuff and like, dude, I just found this cooked oatmeal behind Lowe's. What's that pink stuff? Uh, it's fiber insulation, but uh, it's cruelty free, so I'm like saving the world and shit. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm gonna take it to the potluck and yeah. I hope you die in a hipster best on fire one day. Hipster best on fire. Um, there's, a, there's this uh, organization that just recently did a study about signs to tell that your husband's gay. They released their findings, and uh, one of the ones is, a sign to tell that your husband's gay, he takes frequent business trips to big cities like San Francisco or Asia. <laughs> First off, pretty sure Asia's not a city. And, you know, yeah, forget the technology that they have that's revolutionized the way the world does business. You know, like, your husband's just going there because of the sexy gay robots they have to keep him company during lonely time. That's it. Or, uh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, forget about him making that business deal in Japan to pay for the kid's orthodontist bill. It's just that the body glitter in Japan is so much cheaper by the barrel than it is here. And uh, yeah, so clearly Asia has no re reason to do business ever. It's just for strangers to fuck in the back of an RV in Singapore. Like, that's it. That's it. Is that, did, wait, did I feel like a, did that offend someone? Because <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't, because the whole, the whole idea is irony. It makes it, it's like, oh, that's so ridiculous. It can't possibly be true. That's the idea of it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I imagine, I imagine, totally off topic, I imagine dating in your 40s or your early 50s has got to be really weird. Because both my parents are doing that now, you know, they got divorced years ago, and I just, it seems like the corniest thing ever, you know? Like, you bring the woman back to the house, and you're like, hey, uh, would you like that salmon I made you? Yeah. How about this smooth jazz mixtape I made back in 1987 that's totally doing it for you, right? Right? Yeah. How about all these lit candles around these flammable objects, right? That's totally... God, how could you not want to fuck me right now? Sensei totally makes my dick huge. <laughs> I don't know, it's a medicine. <laughs> I, I kind of fear I'm going to be that guy, but like 20 years from now, though, you know, like telling, like on a date, telling cheesy stories from the office, like on Wednesdays we put Kool Aid in the water cooler, and that's why we call it Wacky Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I could be that guy. Oh my god. But um, I, uh, just to let you know, um, I recently had a guy explain to me about uh, what women want in a man. Yeah. And yeah, and he starts saying, Jesse, women want a guy who's tall, broad shoulders, toned body. It's basically everything he had and everything I don't have. And you know what? He's absolutely right. Because after all, the guy who's telling me this is the guy who just so happens to be fucking my ex-girlfriend. So he totally knows what he's talking about. Just, yeah, that, this, uh... I was I was really hoping that somebody might laugh at that because the whole idea is like learn something.
something that's so fucking crazy, then people get it and shit. But they don't. But, uh, that was a fun lesson to learn, though, at my birthday party. I will say. But anyway, Cafe Jam, you guys have been great. I love you all. And in a solo career, no, but seriously, Jesse Jarvis. Yeah! Yeah, beautiful. But <laughs> oh, that's her. That's the hottest girl in the room. Uh, with 
the aforementioned fifth Harry Potter book downloading on views, because fuck you, I don't care if you've read them, Jim Dale brings those things alive with his voice. <laughs> <laughs> he is a magic man. Every character's its own fucking person. And I don't know if they have to do different takes, but it's like he doesn't even forget which voice he used and which... Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ooh, she... So you're asking yourself, Brian, surely, again, you're joking about your girlfriend breaking up with you. Who wouldn't want to go out with John C. Riley from Games in New York? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be seen around Richmond with the child of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and a Grizzly Bear? Uh, a lot of people. In fact, everyone but two people ever. Um, don't bring up your problems, it make us sad. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I do fear something such as the ocean because it's full of monsters. <laughs> if you've ever heard of or thought of hell, it's what the ocean is. A long time ago, people didn't understand what was below us, filled with unimaginable evil. Entering it itself can kill you. It's the ocean. Think about it. What's a shark do? Nothing but kill. It doesn't stop. It can't stop. It's either killing, about to go kill, or just having had killed, or being filmed by some fucking dickhead who thinks that he can swim with them. Don't do that, please. And whales, you know, I'm sorry. A lot of people love the whales. They're too fucking big. Have you ever been to a natural history museum? Just look at them. They're too big. I'm sorry. You know, it's not funny. It's true. I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, okay. You ever, has anyone ever heard of the Irukandji? It's, it's on the Discovery Channel. It's a special. It's about a jellyfish. They're as big as your thumbnail. You can't see them, but they have enough poison in them to kill you. They just kill you. And I don't understand the, the, the evolutionary process of something that cannot be defied by any other thing in nature. It's just like, this is a little thing that you can't see and it murders everything it touches. <laughs> they swim in packs of thousands, where people swim and fish, and people have to live. Because when you live in a fishing village, you don't live in a fishing village because it's quaint and peaceful and delightful. You live in a fishing village because you can't afford to move fucking 10 miles inland to anywhere else. <laughs> Sorry. It's true. I'm not telling jokes and revealing my deep emotional issues. <laughs> Twenty seconds in line, I'm sorry. God damn it, what happened to that piece of fucking paper? <laughs> Here it is. Alright. Oh! I was going to say this as a transition rather than a joke. I was going to look down upon myself, sigh deeply, and say, I'm sorry, I'm just a fucking clown. Because it's true, that's what I do. That's my vocation. That's my source of income. I'm a clown. If you've ever been at a niece or nephew's party where they're boredly looking on at the Elmo dancing and you can subtly hear them crying underneath, that's me. That's me. I dress in gaudy patterns that fat nurses wouldn't wear at pediatricians' offices. <laughs> Paint children's faces with A little girl asked me to draw Justin Bieber on her face the other day. And I did. Because I'm a fucking whore. Luckily, another little girl had a shirt. I was just staring at a little girl's chest, drawing Justin Bieber on one little girl's cheeks. And there were adults all around me, and who seemed to care. Because they didn't have to fucking deal with these little shitheads for half an hour because I was there. <laughs> That's all they do. You know, my first party ever, I dressed as Dora the Explorer, and I was at a public store. It's not a fucking joke. I'm telling you about my job. <laughs> I dressed as Dora the Explorer, and I danced around, and you can't see in the big head. It's a mascot head, and it's not, you know, I don't work in wherever. I work in Richmond, so these are people that are calling up the All About Fun Company to have their me drive out to Mechanicsville and dance around for their fucking kids. They're not high end, all right? So this Dora the Explorer has a fucking field of vision about this big, and I have to march around and pretend I'm happy. And sometimes that involves doing this, and 
And sometimes little girls stand in front of Dora the Explorer because they don't understand that Dora the Explorer can't see where Dora's going. And sometimes you punch that little girl <laughs> right in the fucking face. And, you know, like, I don't know what it is about it, but there's a aspect that if a giant celebrity that you watch on TV every day punches you in the face, you just stare at them wildly. Like, thank you, Dora. Thank you for punching me in the face. And you look around hoping that nobody's rushing over to push you down, take your head off, and tell you to leave. Instead, they're just busy not tipping you, tipping you off in your AC list radio not working 94 core. I hope you get tipped enough to get cash money to get home. But you won't. Thank you. Good night. Brian Gartland. CLV, a room there, one more comedian. I'm gonna jerk after I look at the thing again. Uh, there's beautiful women at these first four tables, I don't know. <laughs> and his name was Cassandra. JK, Greg, Magnuson, where are you? What's up, Cafe Dean? How y'all doing tonight? Woo! Yeah. What are y'all fucked up? Come on, make some fucking noise. We're all drunk as shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was so pathetic, but I'm gonna let it go. Uh, anyways, I'm Brother Greg, uh, and as you guys can see, I am a Holocaust survivor. <laughs> all you guys are probably history nerds. The Holocaust was over 60 years ago, and you don't look that old. Fuck you. Sure. Anyways, uh, I just moved back up into the area. Uh, I'm originally from Williamsburg, Virginia. Yes, there is more in Williamsburg, Virginia than Colonial Williamsburg. I don't live in a shanty house and I don't ride to school every day in a horse and buggy. But I did buy Thomas Jefferson a shot. He was with a black chick too, so that explained a lot. Historical accuracy, Colonial Williamsburg's all about it. Anyways though, I just moved back up into Richmond. And it's a different place up in this bitch, for real. It's way different than Williamsburg, because there's like so many different kinds of people and shit. Like, I have friends now that are like black, they're Mexican, they're Asians, or as my mom likes to call them, little people. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, in Williamsburg, they're not that many different kinds of people. In fact, all of them can probably be summed, uh, summed all together uh, in one dude that I know. His name is Stacy. The first time I met Stacy, I was chilling with my little brother. We were at a kegger and we were drinking some beer. He's like, oh, you gotta meet my buddy Stacy. So Stacy walks up. First thing he says to me, hey, hey, your name's Greg? Hey, well, Greg, you ever uh, empty out a shotgun shell and fill it with wet toilet paper and shoot one of your buddies with it? <laughs> no. I have never done that before in my life. I said, oh, it's funny shit, Greg. Well, you gotta actually be standing from like here to like that when did that bear? Stand closer, you still kill. <laughs> I wonder how long it took him to figure that shit out. <laughs> For real. God rest Tommy, Robbie, uh, fucking Phil, Brad, James. Fuck, how many people did we kill? Smear the queer must have been a bitch if you were fucking out there in middle school. Anyways. <laughs> uh, well, Stacy, Stacy's an interesting character. I got to sit there and talk to him for a little bit. And uh, he was telling me about the time when he was coming back from West Virginia from moonshine and doing all this shit. He was like, Greg, I'm dropping back from West Virginia. Get this. I'm a little bit drunk. And so, uh, I don't know what happens. The wheel just kind of spun out from under my hands. The fucking truck starts spinning. I fucking hit a mailbox, hit another mailbox, and I hit a telephone pole. The first thing that comes in my mind is, shit! I have weed and about 15 unregistered guns in the car. So I just went across the street, put the guns over there, fucking put the weed in the neighbor's mailbox, buckled myself in the passenger seat, and played dead until the cops got there. 
my guy, the guy there, I said, where is the driver? Where is the driver? This is a day state of Virginia thinks someone else was driving my vehicle. Yeah. Only a redneck would be that smart. But anyways, the most interesting thing about Stacy is the fact that his wife has tried to kill him like a hundred thousand times. No joke. So my older brother asked me, he's like, yo, tell him about your wife's stuff. I don't want to talk about that bitch. I don't want to talk about her. And he looks at me and says, Greg, there ain't nothing more frightening. The first thing you hear, you wake up in the morning, it's the sound of your shotgun shotgun. The first thing you see when you open your little eyes is your wife can't work a safety. <laughs> But yeah, there, there was more shit that happened. He finally got, he got, finally got fed up with his wife. And so uh, he told her to fuck off, told her to sleep in the living room. It was, obviously, it was a bad decision. He was like, Greg, I got so scared. I locked every door from my room to the living room, and still I thought, I just, I just hid under the covers, Greg. And something was telling me, Stacy, open your eyes, Stacy. So I just peeled back the covers like this, and the bitch was standing over me with a broken mason jar. It's some true shit. I thought it was funny. Anyways, <laughs> being back up at VCU has been really cool, but I've always, I forget how, like, college dudes, like, how we all fucking, goddamn it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I forget, I forget how college dudes just kind of sit around and talk, and we just kind of don't talk about anything. But these weird metaphors that we use for sex, like the baseball metaphor, you guys familiar with this shit? But there's something... I, I don't know how I feel about the baseball metaphor, like being on bases and shit like that, because I don't think the guy thought it all the way through. Because, like, there are nine batters on the same field batting for the same fence. So, like, there's a dude on first. I kind of think that it'll be a little bit weird. There's a dude on first and third. I think, hey, this might be fun. The bases are loaded. You're probably holding a video camera. <laughs> or a baseball bat if it's your wife. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny to do, Adrian. How's your mom on the way, Greg? Anyways. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so anyways, uh, I, I love the diversity here on the VCU campus and, you know, whatever. And, uh, but there's, there's, there's one minority group that I don't see enough of, and I wish I saw more of them. They're midgets. Uh, so like me and my me and my new uh, me and my new friend Kulatra, we were walking back to my place. And I saw actually the first midget I ever saw in Richmond, next door to my house. He's apparently my neighbor. He's out front smoking a cigarette. So like any normal person, I asked him, "Hey, you want me to carry you up the stairs?" And uh, you know, he kind of didn't say anything after that. So I was like, "Hey, I kind of feel bad. You should come up to my place." So we came out. We were chilling. Uh, Anyways, that's my time, because he's getting really pissed off in the back, and I'm not that funny. Anyways. Hey, <laughs> y'all. Joe was pissed. <laughs> Keep it going for Greg Magnuson. I was not pissed. Either. Yeah. Letting you know your time frame, that's all. Yeah, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. You've been awesome. Thank you for sticking around as late as shit, and that's really cool of you too. Uh, I'm gonna bombard your ears with one more plug for this uh, this comedy festival this weekend. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Pretty much everybody that you cracked up at this evening is gonna be there. Uh, I'm opening for Doug Stanhope on Saturday. Jared Cullum and James Polk are opening up on Friday. Whitney Cummings is pretentious, so she's bringing her own opener, but it's still going to be hilarious. And uh, there are these cards on like pretty much every table. Uh, it's supposed to be $49 for four nights, which is a great deal. But if you pick up this card and type in the promo code when you buy your tickets, you get 20 bucks off. It's $29 for like four nights of awesome comedy, which is a better deal than anywhere else in America, especially for these three headliners. They each charge upwards of $40 a piece. So come out, support comedy. Uh, we're going to be back in two weeks. I think it's the 27th. So please come back. Uh, find Facebook, ca uh, Cafe DM Comedy. There. Uh, you guys have a great night. Thanks so much for being here.